If you can fully grasp the nitrogen cycle, you will never deal with high nitrates again. Well, why is that? Because you'll understand the biochemical process that converts nitrate into nitrogen gas. No more buying random nitrate reducing products and then having them not work and wondering why. Rather, you'll be able to cultivate all of the bacteria you need to complete the nitrogen cycle in your saltwater tank. As always, a big thanks to our sponsor, Coral Vault. And stay tuned because in just over two weeks, my first fish tank and Coral Vault will be running a huge, gigantic, gargantuan 4th of July giveaway worth thousands of dollars in corals. So be sure to set a calendar alert for the 4th of July and turn on the notification bells for my first fish tank. And of course, if you are in the need for any aquaculture or what you see is what you get corals, check out Coral Vault, coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration with Marine Depot, bringing you week 18 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks, the nitrogen cycle. We are going to be dropping a lot of scientific jargon, so we have made a glossary of all the terms and we're going to put them in the description below and at the My First Fish Tank blog. I need to give you a disclaimer before we start though. I was a Jesuit seminarian for three years. After that, I was a Catholic high school theology teacher retreat director, and campus minister. I am not a scientist, nor do I pretend to even have any scientific training at all. But I have been a teacher, and as a teacher, I have done tons of research to bring this video to you today. If you're a scientist and you see a mistake that I make in today's video, please drop a comment below letting us know what the correction is. That way we can all learn. All right, everybody, get out that pad and pencil because I'm about to drop on you some serious scientific brain bombs. Let's start out with the absolute basic, what is the nitrogen cycle? The nitrogen cycle is the biogeochemical cycle by which nitrogen gas is converted into different chemical forms as it circulates between the atmosphere, the earth, and the oceans. However, even though the atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen is basically useless to humans and thus needs to be converted into other chemical forms. Why is the nitrogen cycle important for plants and animals? Nitrogen is crucially important for all life as we know it on this planet. It is a crucial part of our cell structure, for amino acids, for proteins, and even for our DNA. It is also essential for making chlorophyll in plants, which is used in photosynthesis to provide them with food. So what would happen without the nitrogen cycle? Basically, life as we know it would cease to exist. Period. So how does nitrogen even get into our oceans? Remember that our atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen. So how does that get into the water? The first is through diffusion between the air and the water, also runoff from the land. And the last is actually through lightning, which converts that nitrogen gas into ammonia and nitrate. And then precipitation, whether that's rain, sleet, or snow, drags that down and deposits it into the ocean. Okay, so here we are. How does the nitrogen cycle work? Please note that the nitrogen cycle is slightly different when we're talking about terrestrial land-based versus the marine environment. They're almost completely identical. They just have different players that help move the cycle along. N2, or nitrogen gas, comprises 78% of our Earth's atmosphere, but it's completely unusable by humans. We breathe it in with every breath, but we can't use it. As we already mentioned, nitrogen enters the marine environment through diffusion, through runoff from the land, or through lightning and precipitation. Let's just put up over here the nitrogen cycle. You start with N2, nitrogen gas, then we get ammonium, which is NH4+, from ammonium to nitrite, which is NO2-, minus, from nitrite to nitrate, which is NO3 negative, and from nitrate back to N2, which is nitrogen gas. Those are the basics of the cycle, but how do we work our way through it? The first step in the nitrogen cycle is nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is the chemical process by which nitrogen gas, N2, is assimilated into organic compounds, which is usable by life as we know it. Basically, it's the conversion of nitrogen gas, N2, into NH4 plus ammonium, which is an organic carbon-based compound. This first process of converting nitrogen gas into ammonium is known as ammonification. By the way, I should have mentioned this, N stands for nitrogen, 
H stands for hydrogen, and the O stands for oxygen, just in case there are any non-science people like myself out there. In terrestrial Earth environments, nitrogen fixation happens in one of two ways. The first is via nitrogen-fixing bacteria that lives in legume roots, and the second is through nitrogen-fixing bacteria that lives in the soil. In the marine environment, nitrogen fixation happens primarily via cyanobacteria, which converts nitrogen into ammonium. NH4 plus or ammonium is a building block for all other nitrogen-based compounds. It's also toxic to fish. NH4 plus forms the amino portion of amino acids, and amino acids make proteins, and proteins are responsible for cell structure, enzyme reactions, and a lot more. NH4 plus can be taken in by plants, by fungi, and by bacteria, and incorporated into amino acids, thus building cell structure. So whereas most biological life as we know it can't use the nitrogen gases in the atmosphere, we can consume other plants and animals that have taken in that nitrogen and absorb that into our systems. All organisms have nitrogen-based waste, and in human beings, that nitrogen-based waste comes out in our urine. And like I said, we get our nitrogen from consuming other plants and animals and absorbing that into our bodies. For fish, the nitrogen-based waste is actually NH4+, or ammonium, and most of this is secreted through their gills. And fish get this nitrogen through eating other plants and animals just like we do. As all of us in this hobby already know, ammonia is highly toxic to fish and destroys gill tissues. Which means that if you have too much ammonia in your tank, your fish will suffocate to death. Alright, so we started with N2, or atmospheric nitrogen gas, and through ammonification we converted that into NH4+, or ammonium. The next step in the nitrogen cycle is to convert that ammonium into NO2 negative or nitrite. This is through a process called nitrification, which is the biological oxidation or breakdown of NH4 plus ammonium into NO2 negative and NO3 negative or nitrite and nitrate. This is accomplished through a genus of bacteria called nitrosomonas. Rather than eating proteins and carbohydrates like we do, Nitrosomonas consume ammonium, or NH4+, as their food source. So these bacteria, Nitrosomonas, consume as their food source ammonium, or NH4 positive, and they secrete as their waste nitrite, which is NO2 negative. NO2 negative, or nitrite, is also toxic to fish, although not as toxic as ammonium. Okay, so just to recap. We started with nitrogen gas, and then through a process called ammonification, we arrived at ammonium, or NH4 positive. Then, through nitrification, we went from ammonium to nitrite, which is NO2 negative. Now comes the next step in the nitrogen cycle, which is going from nitrite to nitrate through another process of nitrification. A different genus of bacteria known as Microbacter oxidizes or breaks down NO2 negative to NO3 negative nitrate. Okay, at this point, we're almost done with the cycle. We started with nitrogen gas, we went to ammonium, we went to nitrite, and now we're at nitrate. But how do we go from nitrate back to nitrogen gas? First, let's talk about how to get rid of nitrates from your saltwater aquarium. You can do this in one of two ways. The first is through water changes. If you remove 50% of your water in your saltwater aquarium, you're also going to be removing 50% of the nitrates, or NO3. The second way is by adding live plants, macroalgaes, which use the nitrate, the NO3 negative, as a fertilizer and a food source, thus consuming it. And then, when you remove that growth at a future time, you're actually pulling nitrate out of your system. But while both of these two methods remove nitrate from your system, you're not actually completing the cycle by converting nitrate back into nitrogen gas. So we finally arrive at the last stage of the nitrogen cycle, and the stage that most hobbyists seem to forget about denitrification. Whereas nitrification converted ammonium to nitrite to nitrate, denitrification converts nitrate back into nitrogen gas. Denitrification is the exact opposite chemical process from nitrification. Denitrification, or nitrate reduction, is a chemical process that reduces nitrate, NO3 negative, back to nitrogen gas. Whereas all the previous parts of this cycle relied on aerobic bacteria, this final portion of the cycle needs anaerobic bacteria. In an ideal world for your saltwater aquarium, your tank would become heavily populated with this anaerobic bacteria. That way, you wouldn't need to rely on water changes or on macroalgaes to remove nitrate. 
Rather, you would actually complete the nitrogen cycle and that anaerobic bacteria would convert that nitrate back into nitrogen gas and it would re-enter the atmosphere. But as the name suggests, denitrification or nitrate reduction requires anaerobic bacteria, which means very, very little amounts of oxygen. And where would you find those in your tank? They're really found in one of two places. The first is at the bottom of a deep sand bed and the second is deep inside the core of thick, large pieces of reef rock. That's it, everybody. That's it. We actually did it. Now remember, all of these terms are in the glossary below and at the My First Fish Tank blog. If you like this video, please consider liking this video, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing to My First Fish Tank and Marine Depot. And be sure to tune in next week for week 19 of the Beginner How-To Guide for Saltwater Aquariums and Reef Tanks, Filtration. It's part one of four. We're gonna spend four entire weeks talking about filtration in your saltwater aquarium. And as always, everybody, take care, be well, happy reefing. We'll see you next time.